We all know that Jurgen Klopp is leaving Liverpool at the end of the season, and a new era means new opportunities. Liverpool's ownership group, the Fenway Sports Group, want to take a left field approach as they cut costs at Liverpool and put more investments into their other subsidiaries, which include the Boston Red Sox and Pittsburgh Penguins. They want us to rebuild Liverpool using the Youth Academy only. But they don't want this new approach to be a detriment. They have come to us and told us that if we drop below 10th in the Premier League, we're getting sacked. Bring it on. We are going to have to be so smart about how we approach this. We want to get the young players coming up through our Youth Academy, but of course we don't want to drop below 10. So we're going to have to be very specific about who we scout. I have to check the Youth Academy we already have. We've got a decent goalkeeper in here. Suarez and Grant, I'm going to keep just for the sake of it to see if they become anything special, but this old man guy, he's gone. I want to make sure we have the best youth scouts in the world though. Hugh Russell, his job is safe for the moment, but if we keep finding five-star, five-star guys, oh, we've got a five-star, four-star. That'll do for now. All right, who's this third one going to be? Yes, we've finally got a five-star, five-star here. Moskopoulos, the Greek scout. I'm going to fire Hugh Russell and see if we can get another five-star, five-star, which we do. Beautiful stuff. We've already put a lot of money into this youth academy, and I'm hoping it pays dividends. All right, Galadin is going to France for the next nine months. Dylan Marsh is going to see if we can find the next great English prospects. And Moskopoulos is going for the next regen of Mo Salah. I'm going to send him to Egypt just for three months, searching specifically for a right winger. And whilst we need to make sure that we get rid of every player from this squad that isn't a youth academy player, I'm going to be really, really strategic about it. I'm probably not going to sell anybody until we get a good prospect that we know we can replace them with. We might win a Champions League before then. We won't be eligible, but I think this is going to be the best strategy in terms of not getting sat. Our first batches of players are coming in though. Maybe this guy, Fatty Amin. I mean, I'm only going to sign players that look like they look really good, but I'm not going to show you every scouting report. I'll just show you when somebody good comes through. But I thought, oh, okay. I mean, the potential is good. The overall is pretty mediocre, but let's just, I don't know. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, lads. But we're Liverpool, you know, like we can only be getting the best of the best in here. This isn't like the international rebuilds where I basically get any player and send a million across the world. We want only the creme de la creme here at Anfield. We may have found a decent prospect here in our French report though, Patrice Mars. The value is always a big teller in the early days. 1.1 million value. The overall is between 56 and 76. I'm curious to go check out this guy. Patrice Mars is already 64 overall. All right, we need to harness this dude. But you guys know coaches are so important this year. We've got some good talents in the squad. I want to make sure we have the coaches to match. So I'm just going to keep trying to add. I want to get to the point where eventually we have all of the stars filled and it's five stars all around the board. But the first transfer window has come and gone. We haven't sold anybody, which is by design. We don't have anybody worth joining the squad yet. So we're not eligible to win the Champions League, nor do I think we will be for about a decade. What we'll just go and finish at 10th position this year when we haven't even started the Youth Academy transition and get sacked anyways. So our scouting mission to Egypt to find the next Mo Salah is coming to a conclusion we're going to make our final signing here in the final scouting report. And we've got four potential players that could be the next Mo Salah. Ziyad Ahmed, Tarek Ahmed, Yastin Syed, and Fatih Amin. Are one of these guys going to be the next Mo Salah? We'll have to wait and see. But now that Moskopoulos is back, we're going to send him on a six-month mission to Brazil. And our first trip to Brazil might have already paid dividends. Miguel Miranda, 1.3 million pound value, potential and overall look awesome. He's a Brazilian goalkeeper. Could he be the next Allison? So we're here in January. I'm going to get the show on the road. Basically every player that's eligible and looks decent, I'm going to promote to the senior team and try getting a loan move for. Some of these guys, I mean like this guy, Ruben Terry looks like a bit of a stud. Blondell, his potential is not super high, but the overall is a good start. I mean, Caleb Dodds, I was hopeful for him, but I'm releasing him straight up now. But the rest of them, get him into the senior team, see what we can do. And because with those players coming in, our squad size is a officially full, I'm going to start putting up some of our lower rated younger guys onto the transfer list. In a normal career mode, I would not be wanting to do this, but right now we don't need them, so we may as well get the squad size filled up. There is no chance we're accepting either of these though. Salah, Van Dyke, they're going to be around basically until they retire. It's been a really busy window, lads. We've sold the young players and we've gotten so many loan moves. I'm really curious as to whether any of these players come back in a year or two. Most of them are on two 
weird lone moves. I really want to see if anybody can break through the mold and become a star here when they come back. But I'm going to keep getting young players into the youth academy, keep trying to find only superstars, and hopefully we finish higher than 10. But for this season so far, I think we're going to be sweet with that. We're going for a title. Well, we're definitely not getting sacked this year, lads. End of season one, we win the Premier League with Liverpool. We win the FA Cup with Liverpool. Spurs win the Carabao Cup. Man City win the Champions League. PSG win the Europa League. We went out in the quarterfinals to Slavia Praha. And Atalanta win the Conference League. But we're not necessarily worried about how we went on the pitch too much this year. We're worried about the development of our younger players, how they go out on loan. I mean, it's kind of distorted given some of them already got growth when they were in the youth academy. And I guess it has only been six months. So I'm excited to see how things are tracking along in two years time. Terry could be the first guy we bring back and start to put into the starting 11 though. Gonna be saying goodbye to two players at the end of the season though. Adrian, Adrian and Thiago, the Spaniards are both leaving. But to start season number two, we're about to have a serious nuke job to this side. I really only wanna have the strong starting 11 and the bench and then everybody else in the reserves is getting kicked out. First things first here for season two, Dylan Marsh is gonna be fired in the hopes that we can get our third and final five star fire five star we cannot i'm tempted to wait a month and wait for it to refresh but i kind of just want to get things on the road here so we're going to go here for damien farrell this year fellas we're going to jürgen klopp's homeland we're going to germany for nine months damien farrell he's spending nine months in england and miskopolis is heading to argentina get ready for a very busy transfer window lads i want to nuke this squad because i mean we still have a full squad right now i've promoted all of the 16 year olds from the the youth academy we only have two 15 year olds remaining felipe ramos and mael roy it's so interesting because they both have really high overalls but their potentials have dropped down quite a lot so i'm hoping we they turn 16 this year we get them straight into the squad and out on loan but this was a departure i thought i had to show you lads i didn't necessarily want to do it we were have, gonna have to do it eventually but darwin nunez wanted it out of the club so we're gonna sell him to real madrid i'm hoping that doesn't cost us it's also made me realize though that we are going to need a young striker prospect into the club. We've got a lot of wingers, we've got a lot of midfielders, but we do not have any potential striker prospects. Please tell me we've just found an absolute stud here. Roberto Cortez, 17 years of age, 8, 1.8 million pound valuation. I'm signing him. He can be eligible for this squad right now. Cortez, Cortez is 67 overall at center back right now. That is brilliant. I'm promoting him straight to the senior team. There's still about a month left in the window. Let's try getting him a loan move. He should probably be an expectation at this point, but this window, chaos. Compared to last year, we've done about double the business. We've gotten so many players cleared out of the squad, and every single one of our Youth Academy players has been loaned out that wasn't loaned out last year. The starting 11, besides the losses of Thiago and Nunez, is basically the exact same. The bench, still decent, still a strong bench, but our reserves... We have basically nobody here. And I'm really hoping some of our young players have absolutely belter seasons away on loan because I want to start slowly integrating players from next year onwards. But I've actually recalled Miskopoulos back from his trip to Argentina because I think it's imperative when he gets back that we set things up looking for just a striker. Because right now, all we have is this Alberto Alvarez guy who I've just converted into a striker. He's not a natural striker though, so I'm going to try training him up to be one. But I want somebody that is like one of the best striker prospects in the world. So for the next nine months, we are sending Miskopoulos to Spain, looking for the next Fernando Torres, searching only for strikers. Our mission to try finding a Spanish striker has been pretty unsuccessful so far. But going to Germany has been brilliant for us so far. I mean, our youth academy is almost all Germans at this point. The scout is working overtime. And again, this is going to be the, the tradition every single year but as soon as you turn 18 17 even 16 i'm just going to bring you straight into the senior team i won't show you every year but i'm just trying to get as many players that look decent into the senior team and get them loan moves maybe paul schroeder he was a center attacking midfielder originally i converted him to a striker he got up to 63 overall maybe he might be the answer also our two potential most solid players are coming along decently both syed is the man okay syed is the guy at the moment i think a 
ye younger than Ahmed and one overall higher. But these guys are coming along half decently. Still not quite at the level of the GOAT Mo Salah though. I've never seen this before. Manager of the year? What the hell? I was just simulating through January here. We've won manager of the year. Mr. Rebuild, I have never achieved this before. I didn't even know this was possible, but it is an honor nonetheless. Back to back Premier League titles here with Liverpool. That top eight really is just absolutely wild, but we've gone back to back. This might be the last one for a while because next year I'm planning on integrating a few of the Youth Academy players in and really getting the things rolling. And United down in ninth, who got relegated? Nobody too notable. We've won the Community Shield. That's two trophies this year. We we don't go back to back in the FA Cup though, nor do we win the Carabao. We lost in the Champions League final. I mean, that's fine by me. Even if we would have won the Champions League final this year, it wouldn't have been the rebuild complete because we don't have our full youth academy team at the moment. Marseille won the Europa League and Newcastle won the Conference League. But again, we're more focused on who's going to be into the starting 11 next year. How did the development go? Shepard up to a 71, which is great to see. We're definitely not short on goalkeeper prospects. I'll say that. We have got goalkeepers coming out of our absolute ears. Defense though might be a little bit of an issue, especially left back. Might have to go to like a three of the back formation for Air 63, Cortez only up to a 69. I'm a little disappointed by the growth of some of our defenders. Billy Smith up to a 65 though, which is nice. Ashton up to a 70, so maybe he could come into the starting 11 next year. Terry, Ruben Terry might have to make his entrance as well. 72, he's our highest rated player so far. 67, 69 for Royce, Herman, now nah, Gibbons, oh my God, Albie Gibbons up to a 73 at right midfield. That's a plus nine growth. That is really good to see lads Maya up to a 69 Douglas Grant up to a 68 all right we're getting some decent prospect here in the attack how did they are okay Syed 67 I'm probably gonna try loading him out again though I'm not gonna bring him in until Mo Salah is no longer suitable for the starting 11 and then striker wise Schroeder 65 Alvarez 64 and then Castilla only 55 and again we look at what we've done in terms of bringing strikers in it's not really been good has it Spain Spain really hasn't done a job Vera, Vera might be good down the line, but right now, I mean, this Estrada guy's going down crazily. Ramos will probably promote him next year, but again, he's only got 54 shooting stats, so we are really looking like we might struggle at the striker role. Gonna let Billy's contract expire here. Next year, though, gonna sell off a bunch of the higher rated players, start the transition for players into the starting level. So this is my game plan for the year, lads. Two of our players are coming back from loan and into the squad. Gibbons, I'm gonna convert to left winger and he's going to play at the left wing and then Ashton is going to come in at the center midfield role. I'm going to try selling Luis Diaz, Gravenberch, Jones, get these guys some starting 11 game time. A lot of players have come back from loan that we're going to have to loan out this year. All right, Damian Farrell, you're out of here, mate. Let's see if this is the year we can get our third five-star, five-star scout. Oh my God, it's even... All right, I'm going to hold off because... These guys are significantly worse. I mean, this Alvarez guy must be half decent because Celtic have come in for him, but I'm looking for loans. Also, I'm drawing a line in the sand. Unless we find a goalkeeper across our youth academies who has the greatest potential known to man, I don't plan on bringing any more goalkeepers in because surely out of what, these seven or eight goalkeepers, one of them's gonna be decent? Can Celtic stop coming in for all of our young striker prospects? It's been hard enough trying to find a decent striker prospect and now you guys want all of them. Finally, yes, a five-star, five-star. We waited a week and now we've got this Welshman, Emir Cart Cardigan, Cardigan, let's hire him. That is so satisfying to look at though. Five-star, five-stars all across the board. But this year I'm gonna be focusing on specific positions. So we're gonna go for, in Italy, we're looking for center midfielders. In England, we are looking for more defenders. And we're sending Miskopoulos to Nigeria, looking for strikers. The biggest departure of the window has happened here though, lads. Luis Diaz is gone. We're really making the jump now from losing our star players and replacing them with the youngsters. Scouting Nigeria for a striker might have been the move. We've found a guy here, Darlington Amos, although Vera, Vera looks like a better prospect, but I'm gonna get Amos into the squad now and just see if he can become something. I'm praying, like the bar is in hell right now for strikers. And immediately we get him a loan move. Darlington Amos off to the Spanish league for two years. Godspeed, my friend, please be the answer. There is just so much on the line for us this season. We're really going all out. 
out because, I mean, we've got Ashton and Gibbons introduced into the lineup now. But again, the majority of the side now are Youth Academy prospects. The only players remaining from the initial Liverpool squad are the ones you see on the screen here. And the goal is to just slowly turn them over season by season as players become ready. Because as we said, if we fall below 10th, the border Sakonots. Scrolling through the squad screen is quite funny to see, just given all of the loan out badges. Hopefully, come on, I'm throwing enough darts at the board. Hopefully one's gonna land in a bullseye. Finally, it's taken us like three months, but Albie Gibbons can officially be converted to a left winger. I'm hoping it makes a difference. 74 right now, and he goes up to a 76. Albie Gibbons, one of our brightest prospects. We miss out on a third consecutive Premier League title here by just two two points with Liverpool, but at least we didn't finish 10th. At least we still keep our job. Even bringing in the two players hasn't screwed us up too much, which is exactly what we're after. And we do win another community shield. Man United win the FA Cup. We win our first Carabao Cup as Liverpool manager, but unfortunately we're starting to get a big drop off in the Champions League. Borussia Dortmund did win it this year. Arsenal win the Europa League and RC Lens are going to win the Conference League. A lot of our players have returned from their loan spell. Shepard up to a 75. Miranda a 74. We're starting to really get some good growth here with the lads, which is what we're after. Honestly, next year might be the year where we get a lot of our original players out and focus just dive head first into the Youth Academy squad. Ortez up to a 71. I think defense is where we're struggling the best to get the most to get the biggest breakthroughs. Hawkins up to a 64, which is nice. Ashton having a full year. How did he go stats wise? 18 games, zero goals, one assist, not great. How about old mate at left wing? Gibbons, 19 games, one goal, one assist. That's the thing. I think the CPU is automatically selecting our higher rated players out of position ahead of these guys. Damn, we have so much competition at the wings. Schaefer up to a 76. Meyer up to a 75. All right, yeah, I think I'm ready to make the big jump forward next year. How about our Egyptians? How are the Mo Salah regens? Mo Salah 2.0 is going. 60, 72 there for Saeed. 68 for Ahmed. So I think Saeed is going to be the man. And then strikers. Schroeder up to a 65. Alvarez to a 70. And Amos up to a 66. Losing a massive player already here as we get ready for season number four. Andy Robertson. It's time to go. This is going to be the riskiest season yet. And that's because we are cleaning the house. Diogo Jota is gone. Harvey Elliott's leaving. We've sold Allison to Girona. Joe Gomez to Monaco. Seb Vandenberg to Brentford. And Fabio Carvalho to Aston Villa. But I'm confident you guys didn't see this one coming. I'm not even mad about this. I'm just impressed. Bournemouth have signed Dominic Soboslai for £147 million. They might just win the Premier League this year. And honestly, I tried to sell Virgil van Dijk, but every transfer broke down in the contract section. It feels wrong doing this because he is such a legend of Liverpool, but we need to take the next step forward. Virgil van Dijk released. Time to sink or time to swim, lads. Half of the starting 11 has been replaced. We've kept Kanade, Trent, McAllister, Gakpo, and Salah. But besides that, it is all youth academy players here. Who is going to step up? We've got barely any squad numbers, but who is going to step up? Are we going to keep our job? And how are we going to go in the Champions League? It was looking a little dicey there for a while, but we have kept our job. We finished 7th in the Premier League with Liverpool, which all things considered is not a bad season at all. I thought we were really flirting with danger, but we finished 7th, Bournemouth in 10th, and the Premier League title this year goes to Man City. Man City do also win the FA Cup. And our youngsters are getting their first title. We've won the Carabao Cup. We did finish third in a really difficult Champions League group though, which means we are into the Europa League, but the Champions League was won by Man City. So in the Europa League, we lost to Braga 4-2 in the prelims. It's English domination though. Arsenal winning an all English final there. England on top, all three tournaments going English sides. No surprise to see Salah and McAllister finishing top of the golden boot race, but Alberto Alvarez. All right, that just made my job a lot easier. I was debating putting a striker up there next year. Gakpo's gonna go. Alvarez, 17 goals, brilliant. 
besides that, none of our other youngsters doing too well on the score sheet. Development wise, Miranda could be the guy in, in between the sticks next year, our Allison 2.0. Yeah, things coming along quite nicely. Nickel, we've got, we've got goalkeepers, man. We have got goalkeepers. Blondell, nice from him. He's our only left back prospect. There are definitely positions that we're going to need to really focus in on now in our youth academy. Instead of scouting just across the board, I'm going for positions only. Center midfield, we might need some help in. Attacking midfield, we've got options. And we definitely do not need any help when it comes to wingers. Schaefer up to an 80. Maybe it's time to say goodbye to Mo Salah. Maya 78. Yeah, we have got so many good options in terms of the wings. I'm going to have to play around with the formation next year to make sure everybody can get in in positions where we've got options. To be honest, I think our attack is sorted. I think we just really need help defensively and in the center midfield position. That's season four in the books. I'm debating whether we go all out in season five and make ourselves eligible. We are so close to having a full youth academy side. One of the final remaining real life players, Cody Gakpo, off and out of the club to Atalanta. We're making some more big calls here. McAllister, he's out of the club. And I may have just broken every Liverpool fan's heart, but it's time to move on from him, lads. Mo Salah is off to Brighton. 107.4 million pounds. This one was conflicting in my mind, but we're, we're ready. It's time. So we've gone mental with the loans again, and then this is what the team looks like this year. This is... We're at the point now. Kanate and Trent are the only original players remaining. That's because we really have no good prospects at center back and right back, at least. Right, right back. 49 rated Hobbs is the main guy. So we need to get that sorted quick smart. I've changed the formation. Gibbons in at left mid there. Maya, I'm currently converting to an attacking midfielder. Putting a lot of faith into these lads though. So we're going for right backs here in the Netherlands. I'm only going for right back searches here. England, we're only going to look for center backs. And then we're going to Brazil to just look for left backs. And now we pray that we can find some decent prospects and not get sacked in the process. So we're here in January. We've found a few decent defensive prospects. The top ones, I'm going to get into the squad and try getting some loan moves for them. The first man, as soon as we saw this guy, 16-year-old Giovanni Martins, he looks like he could be the real deal at right back. Then we got George Nash, English center back. Get him in there. 89 to 94 potential is really nice. Archie Edwards going to get him in. Left back though, we've only found mediocre players at the moment, to be honest. I'm going to go and get the Alfonso Lima promoted, but the one that we really want to be a stud down the line is Miguel Almeida. If there was going to be a season that we were going to lose our job, it was going to be this one. Our star players, our star regens, our star youth academy prospects, and now now on the up and up, I think we're clear from danger. We're probably going to get sacked next year, but we finished fifth this year, which I'm happy about. Anybody get relegated? Chelsea in 10th. They were in relegation danger at the start of the season, but Leicester, Southampton, Coventry go down. Man City win an FA Cup. Man City also win the Carabao. Is this really going to be the first year we don't win any silverware? Champions, Man City. My God. So we went undefeated in the Europa League group stages. Round of 16, we beat Roma. Quarterfinals, we go out to Celtic. We we could have gone on a cup run this year, but Tottenham end up winning the Europa League and Real Sociedad win the Conference League. Alberto Alvarez. Do you guys remember a few years ago when I converted this guy to a striker and I thought that he would just be a throwaway player? He's now our star player. 30 goals, 82 overall. At 20 years of age, Alberto Alvarez. All right, you've got my attention. Gibbons up to an 82 now. Trent still absolutely killing it for us. Schaefer, a great year. I'm happy with the lads. <laughs> I think we're just going to have a back and forth every year between the goalkeepers. Hugh Shepard up to an 82. Miranda up to an 81. Our goalkeepers are so rock solid. I honestly might look at letting some of them go to clear up space in the future. Blondell up to a 77, which definitely helps a lot. Lima 62. Maybe next year we make the push. We've got a lot of center backs that are 75 rated now. Is it time to say goodbye to Canate next year? Not right back. How are our young prospects going? I mean, Jacobs didn't get any loans in for him. Martins didn't get any loans. Yeah, we're going to have to keep Trent next year. Ashton up to an 80, which is brilliant. We're at a bit of a crossroads, man. We've got some players that are absolutely crushing it, but others where we still need so much help. I don't know what the timeline is looking like in terms of when I think we could complete this rebuild. Saeed up to a 79. Mo Salah 2.0 with a great year. We're on the right path, but still we need a little bit of help 
in that right back and center back roles. We've done all of our loan works. I haven't sold any players this window, but I'm kind of in the back of my head thinking this might have to be the last year for Canate and Alexander Arnold. I think at once some point we're gonna have to jump off and make ourselves eligible. So what I'm hoping this year is we somehow qualify for the Champions League. We get rid of Alexander Arnold and Canate and we become eligible next year. Hopefully Alvarez is up to an 85 by then, Myers an 83. You know, I'm hoping like the defense will be into the 80s. We could have a half decent team next year. In terms of a right back succession plan, we're currently converting Theo Thornier into a right back. It's gonna take a little while, but that's honestly the best prospect we have at the moment. And as always, let's just hope the lads we have off on loan can have insane years. Third in the Premier League, back in the Champions League. Honestly, lads, it's gonna be the time to jump in next year. I'm gonna sell Canate and I'm gonna sell Trent. We need to make ourselves eligible on the odd chance that we can go on a run next year. Man City have absolutely dominated in this video. Fulham in fourth and in the relegation zone, it's Everton, Burnley and Sheffield United. We lost the FA Cup final to Arsenal and we lost the Carabao Cup final to Man City. So close to a treble this year. Man, Man City... They, they're just, it's not fair, is it? We actually finished third in our Europa League group, which starred Bucharest top and Barcelona end up winning. So that means we would have been in the pre, oh my God, we lost. We lost to that Romanian side, Cravoya, in the preliminary round of the Conference League. I was hoping we could go on a run there, but Stade de Rems are gonna win that. Alvarez is that guy. We were worried for so long that we wouldn't have a striker up top. Alberto Alvarez is that guy. 26 and six, 85 overall. Schaefer's 85 overall as well. Trent, we're gonna really miss not having his 92 rating and the goals he brings and the assists. Gibbons up to an 84. We're growing quite nicely, lads, but next year is gonna be a huge test. How's the goalkeeper race going? Miranda is an 84. Five. Meanwhile, Shepard stays at an 82. So it looks like we finally have that breakthrough. Schroeder got up to an 83 on his loan spell. Maybe we could move to a four. Maybe I could go for a three at the back. I mean, what's the defensive look, look looking like? Blondell to a 79. Schmidt up to a 78, 80, 77, 78. Then right back wise, Fournier 76. We honestly might be better off just going straight to a three at the back and then having two strikers. Ashton to an 82. Maya to an 84. Terry to an 82. Yeah, we're going to have some serious questions to ask next year. But well, we are going to let the first player that's come through our youth academy leave. Bradley Hobbs. Just the right back position is just being cursed for us, lads. Bradley Hobbs is walking on a free. But we're back and we're in the Champions League. Bring on next season. Can we go on a magical run? I want to sell Trent Alexander-Arnold, but I refuse. I refuse to sell him to Manchester City. We need to do everything we can to stop them from getting better. Kanate is gone. Trent is the only man that remains. We did sell Kanate to Newcastle United. And ladies and gentlemen, we are officially eligible. The final player from the default Liverpool squad that isn't one of our youth academy players, Trent Alexander-Arnold, has been sold to Napoli. So we are officially a full youth academy side. Our attack is so damn strong. The defense has me worried though. We're probably gonna score 100 goals and concede 105. We just, yeah, we're just gonna have to make sure we score goals because the defense is gonna be leaky. Hopefully Blondell, Cortez, Schroeder, and Fournier can get some growth this year. If not, one of the reserves, and if not them, one of the million defenders we have out on loan. Oh, for God's sake. For God's sake, we've got Napoli in our Champions League group. We sold, I sold Trent Alexander-Arnold to Napoli thinking, oh yeah, as long as I don't sell him to a champion. Don't sell him to a Premier League club. We're going to be sweet. Nah, nah, we're not sweet. Now we have to verse him in the group stages. We've got Napoli, Feyenoord, and Aarhus from the Danish League. We need to get out of this group. The lads are looking strong. This is going to be a huge indicator, though. What a group. Oh, my God. All right, so this is about as tight as it gets. One point separates first and last. It comes down to the final match day. We top Group A on nine points. Meanwhile, Aarhus come last on eight points. If you told me this was going to be the order of the group, I would not have been surprised, but the points are mental. Anyways, we top it. We're into the round of 16, and we have Shakhtar Donetsk here. 
interesting. I mean, this is a really interesting Champions League. Royal Antwerp, Torino, Shakhtar Donetsk, Union Berlin, Dynamo Kiev, Newcastle United. We, if, if, if there's a few upsets here, we could have a good path. Things are not going too well in the Premier League right now. I mean, we are only two points out of a Champions League spot, but we're also six points from 10th position. I'm wondering whether the board's going to keep us, keep things tough on us again, or whether we've passed that. Regardless, though, we need to step it up in the second half of the year. So we travel here to the Ukraine for the first leg here against Shakhtar Donetsk. Again, the attack, if I just put my hand over the screen and look at the attack, I'm feeling really confident. This is a Champions League winning attack, but the defense is crap. The defense is just not there at the moment. I think it will be in a few years, but right now we're going to have to rely heavily on the offense, which doesn't really work out because we get a one-all draw here. Things are all tied as we head back to Anfield. Round of 16, second leg, we're at home here. Anfield all tied up here against Shakhtar. We need a big fur. We need a big game here, lads. We need goals. We need a clean sheet. And we get the goals. No clean sheet, but a Terry Brace and a Gibbons nail in the coffin is going to see us move on to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Were there any upsets? So the Man City game still is alive. Atletico Madrid win. Union Berlin ahead at the moment. Kiev. Ugh, it's not too many upsets still available. But that has worked out really well for us. We've got Union Berlin in the quarterfinals. Union Berlin, they took down, who they take down? They took down AC Milan in the round of 16. So this is the best case scenario. Marseille would have been all right, but Inter and Marseille, Inter and Napoli rather, with big leads already. Traveling to Germany here for the first leg. Come on, fellas. Our whole defense, everybody is 80 rated. But here we go. Can we get ourselves some goals in the first leg? We do, but we concede again. We miss a penalty with Schaefer. We get a bunch of yellow cards. It's two all, but we might be in some real strife in terms of suspensions for the second leg. Holy hell, Alvarez is suspended for the second leg. Now, Nigerian striker Amos comes in here for the second leg at, a at Anfield. We need him to step up and do a job for us. Fixed your congestion, kicking our ass. But a spot in a Champions League semi-final on the line, which we do. Schneider, Schaefer, and Terry, all bad goals. We're into a Champions League semi here, lads. <sighs> Trent's returning. Trent is returning to Anfield. We shouldn't have sold him. If he scores the winning goal against us, I am going to be so sad. But we're versing Napoli here in the Champions League semis. Alvarez back. We're at home for the first leg, which is a bit of a change. We need to take the lead going to Naples. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Bag some goals. Oh my god. 3-0. Blondil with a red card. 3 Nil. How has that happened then? How has that happened? The dream of a Champions League final here is just about dead and buried. We are 3 nil down to Napoli. Blondel suspended. The lads are kind of sad. Cortez goes to left back. Schmidt comes into the starting 11. We're going to have to pull off one of the greatest comebacks in Champions League history if we want to go to the final here. Can we do it? Away in Naples. And it is a nil-nil draw. Of course it is. Where was that clean sheet in the first leg? We go out in the Champions League semi-finals in heartbreaking fashion. The one silver lining is we're going to get another crack next year, fellas. Second in the Premier League here with Liverpool. Man City, there is no stopping them. Relegation zone and Forest, Southampton, Borough all going down. We did first Forest on the final day of the season, so I'm pretty sure we got them relegated. Chelsea win at the FA Cup. Man City beat Plymouth. Plymouth. Pie faces in dreamland right now. And Real Madrid ended up beating Napoli to win the Champions League. League final. PSG win the Europa League and Manchester United win the Conference League. Pretty balanced season. I mean, that's one of the worst seasons Alvarez has had, but like people have picked up the slack. Schaefer with 14 goals, Gibbons 14. Terry had 25 goal contributions, Meyer with 20 goal contributions. So it's a bit of a team effort this year. The good thing that I'm excited about for next year is everybody's going to be coming back from their loans. We're going all out for a Champions League title next year. If there's anybody you want to get a close, Nash had some good progress. But if there is anybody you want to have a closer look at, pause and go have a look at them. But I mean, Lehman up to an 82. We're going to have some serious questions to ask on starters. Ramos up to an 83. Romeo 80. The lads are looking good right now. We have got a lot of depth. Schroeder to an 86. We might have to go for another formation change. 
this is a good spot to be in. So we have decided to go for a formation change. Schroeder coming back and having so much growth was a non-negotiable to get him into the starting lineup. So we're now playing a three. It's like a three, one, four, two. Ashton center midfield. It's a real attacking formation here, but it's the best way to get the highest overall into the squad. Again, the defense is a bit of an issue. Miranda up to an 88, which is nice. We've got attacking midfielders coming out of holes. We've got the, the regen, not the regen, but like the next Mohamed Salah Saeed on the bench we're looking good offensively lads just the back three still need some help but i mean almost everybody's back now so we have got so much depth in every position i'm not worried about getting injuries or suspensions too much going in the semi-finals last year gave us a lot of confidence but we've got to back it up this year this is a tough group juve leverkusen Cluj. We need to top the group again and get out. I don't want it to be a one point differential. I want us to have some leeway. Perfect. No complaints from me, lads. No complaints. We have topped the group. We've got a donut in the loss column. Beautiful. Juve get knocked out even better. Now let's just hope we can get the cherry on top and get another favorable round of 16 opponent. Last year we had Shakhtar. This year we've got PSG. Really? I mean, this is a lot tougher than last year. The last 16 is full of juggernauts, but we get PSG. Come on now. I really want a Premier League title. We won it in the first two years, but we haven't won it since. Man City's gotten off to a slow start. We're four points behind Newcastle. Let's get it done. Into the Lions Den we go, ladies and gentlemen. I missed having Shakhtar Donetsk. We've got PSG here. First leg away in Paris. And it is a one-all draw. I thought maybe the FIFA gods were going to punish us for me being a wanker and saying Paris like a douchebag. But luckily they don't. All tied up as we head back to Anfield. We had so many draws in the first legs last year, but we always got it done in the second leg. I'm hoping that can carry on again here. Schroeder suffered a slight knock. He's only just coming back to full fitness. Here we go, fellas. At Anfield. Come on! Alvarez, the man himself, Alvarez, gets us the match winner in the 83rd minute. That is a massive scalp. We take down a PSG side that have Donnarumma, Araujo, Ribeiro. They've got McAllister in there and Barbe. They've got an insane side. And we take them down. That is massive. And in the quarterfinals, we have another side that lost in the semifinals last year. Both of us want to get to the final, but only one of us is going to get back to the semifinals. We're facing Inter Milan. We've only had a home leg first once in this entire rebuild in the Champions League, and it resulted in a 3-0 loss. So I don't know if I'm a fan of this being the way we start this quarterfinal against Inter. All right, all right, it's out of the window now because we have won 2-0. Darwin Nunez is going to miss a penalty there. That is brilliant. Schroeder makes it 2-0 in the 89th minute. I'm hoping Terry's not suspended, but we're in a really good position. So no suspension for Terry, which is brilliant to see. We take a two-goal advantage to the San Siro. We're in a good position, but we cannot sleep on Inter Milan. They made it to the semi-final last year for a reason. And I mean, again, our defense is still the weak point of our squad. It's slowly catching up, but it's still a weak point nonetheless. All right, we lose the game but we win the tie. We win across two legs and we're heading back to a Champions League semi-final. And I don't know about you guys, but I want a second shot at Napoli. But we will not be getting a second shot this year at Napoli. They lost on penalties to Bayern Munich. In the semi-finals, we face AC Milan. We're going back to Milan. We're facing the red side this time. First leg on the road. We've played our last Champions League game at the San Siro. It was a loss. We need to turn that around this time. First leg, and it's a 1-0 win. Cortez yellow card, but Schroeder is consistently proving his worth up top. We take a lead back to Anfield, but again, I'm not getting too far ahead of us. We have a mission still ahead of us. Cortez was suspended for the second leg, which means Fournier, our center back, converted into a right back, is going back to his original position. He comes in here as we try to hold on and get ourselves past where we went out last year. Champions League semi-final, second leg, and we hold on. Gibbons, Terry, Schaefer, we're heading to a Champions League final with this Youth Academy Liverpool side. And it looks like we're going to be versing Real Sociedad in the final. That is crazy. It's taken us quite some time, but we now have an opportunity to finish this insane project. A look around the grounds. It's a club we're familiar with. In fact, it's two clubs we're quite familiar with Union Berlin beating Juve in the Europa League final. Conference League final sees Newcastle United win. We finish 
one point short of Manchester City. That is cruel. Leeds United in seventh in the Premier League and relegation, Everton, Wolves, and Burnley. Chelsea win the FA Cup. Chelsea also win the Carabao Cup. Fellas, I am so excited for this Champions League final. I'm so happy we decided to bring Schroeder back into the starting 11. He really had a renaissance after that loan spell. Him and Alvarez up top is absolutely deadly. Schaefer on the right-hand side. Man, Youth Academy is the answer. Youth Academy is so much fun. Can it be fun enough though and successful enough to win us a Champions League? It's not unlikely to see Liverpool in the Champions League final, but under these circumstances with this team, this is something to behold. Sociedad have been so hard to get the ball off here to start this game. The good block there, Schroeder. Ball down the side here. This is where we're gonna get them. That's an all right ball, but we've got the space. Alvarez, 1-0, Alvarez, that is where, I feel this is going to be an end-to-end -end game because we're playing a three at the back with a not so great defense, which means they're going to get opportunities, but just like that on the counter attack, we are so damn deadly. Good ball into the corner there, Alvarez feels like he's everywhere, holding it up against Mendy, we send Mendy reaching, Schroeder, they try to lunge in, oh, still shoot it, oh my god, flick it, flick it, shoot! What happened there? Oh, he's offside, is he? Oh, that is so unlucky. We were basically in there. No shots. No shots, Tell. No shots. He's a great striker. We're keeping a good job at the moment. Going to bring in some a little bit of help here. They're passing us to death, but they hit it straight at Miranda. We'll take that, though, into the change rooms. They've got numbers on the right-hand side. I need my midfielders to help. God, we get caught on the counter-attack. That is a rocket from Kubo. Oh, my God. No, you're so slow, Schroeder. Tell just runs straight past him. Tell just killing us there with the pace. What is that? Oh my god, that's a pen. What are we doing? Oh my god, he was offside. Oh my god, he was offside. Now nah, we need to I need to take a breather here because we are getting dominated in the second half. Schroeder, come on, we need a good ball in here. Gonna hold it up. Good body faint. Good pass. Good movement. Oh my god, the finish from Maya just wasn't there. Put it out wide. Good stuff. I could have gone center, but I'm gonna go out here with Gibbons. Gibbons, that's beautifully weighted. In front, Alvarez. It's a shocking touch. Schroeder with a follow up. Schroeder's gonna get enough power behind it. And that is surely gonna win the Champions League final. I thought we had blown that completely. Schroeder, I saw it come up into the air and I was like, all right, hold down left trigger and just press circle and hope you get enough power behind this, which is exactly what happens. Oh my God. Now we need to lock in defensively here. Please just give one minute of stoppage time. There it is, fellas. Oh, what a final. That was backs against the wall stuff. I love doing these types of rebuilds, fellas. We have won a Champions League title with Liverpool. Not an impressive feat. We do it only with the Youth Academy. I'm buzzing from that one, lads. So many heroes from every corner of the globe. But our first midfielder, Ashton, he's been the captain since day one. And he is going to be the man to lift the Champions League trophy with this Youth Academy Liverpool side. Lads, if you enjoy this type of video and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.